I think that people often wonder what the difference is between anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism. And I, I guess the easiest way to describe some of the differences is just to point out that if anti-Semitism were what, all we had, it wouldn't be a very potent uh, ideology or a very potent way of thinking about the world. Many parts of the world have never had Jews in them. Uh, and those parts of the world that have had Jews in them have usually had very few Jews in them. So how did thinking about Judaism become something that so many billions of people who've never met a Jew, never lived near a Jew, came to think about? Um, Anti-Semitism doesn't really help us explain that in part because it's so much about the Jewish people, people recognized as Jewish. So what is anti-Judaism? Anti-Judaism is a way of thinking about the world that understands Judaism as a category in the world that is important and sometimes dangerous and sometimes the very thing that has to be overcome in order to perfect the world or in order to perfect yourself. Let me give you just one tiny example to give you a sense of how thinking about Judaism uh, became important very early, say for the Christian religion, in ways that had not much to do with real Jews and how it could then become useful for thinking about basically any Christian, anything in the world. I don't know how uh, well versed you are in um, the New Testament, but the letters of Paul are the, really the earliest scriptures we have from the followers of Jesus. And in Galatians, one of the earliest letters, there's a debate between Paul and Peter, between these two apostles, about how followers of Jesus who are not Jews, Gentile followers of Jesus, should relate to Jesus' own Jewish customs, circumcision, kashrut, these kinds of things. And in that letter at Galatians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul says to Peter, you're a hypocrite, because even though you don't live like a Jew, in that you don't practice kashrut, etc., you want the Gentiles to Judaize. He uses this word Judaize. So what is the word? He doesn't use Semitize or anything like this. Semitic isn't even a word that comes up until the 19th century. The word Judaize. What does he mean by this word Judaize? He doesn't mean that the Gentile followers of Jesus are converting to Judaism. He doesn't mean that at all. He means that Gentiles, Christians, followers of Jesus, are acting like you might think Jews act. And what does he mean by acting like Jews? He means um, putting too much emphasis on the flesh by wanting, for example, to circumcise themselves because Jesus had circumcised himself. Putting too much emphasis on the letter of scripture, wanting to observe kashrut or circumcise themselves or observe the law or not eat pork because scripture says you shouldn't do those things and Jesus didn't do those things. He means placing too much emphasis on law or on the world, the material world as opposed to the spirit. So all of these things come to be thought of as Judaizing. And notice, every human being lives in the flesh. All societies require law. Whenever we read scripture or anything else, we have to pay attention to the literal meaning. We can't live without it. Even when we communicate with each other, the literal meanings of words is crucial to understanding each other. So what Paul really said was that every Christian is always at risk of Judaizing, of becoming Jewish. And he put in the middle of every Christian this little conscience, we might call it this little Jiminy Jew, that the Christian has to overcome. So anti-Judaism is the idea that every Christian, and later every Muslim for reasons um, that we can talk about, uh, has to, in order to perfect themselves as Christians, be on guard against uh, the Jew with the Jew within them, the Jewishness within them, the jew -ness within them. And that doesn't mean that they're at risk of becoming observant, believing Jews. It means that they're at risk of relating to the world like Jews. Again, placing too much emphasis on money, on matter, on law, on letter, on the flesh, not loving uh, and reading correctly. That's what becoming Jewish came to mean to all these people. And that's why anti-Judaism became a way of thinking about how you should, as a Christian or a Muslim, act in the world, how you could criticize other Christians, other Muslims for acting in the world, how you could criticize basically anything in the world as too Jewish, as Judaizing. 
anti-Judaism in that sense became an ideal. It became a way of thinking about the good. Anti-Judaism is often uh, a way of actually trying to reach our very highest ideals as a culture or a people. Let me give you an example. Um, because it's really an interesting and a challenging example uh, to my mind, and that's um, Shakespeare. Uh, Shakespeare writes a play that is today famous for its, some people call it anti-Semitic themes. Um, I'm thinking, of course, of The Merchant of Venice and of its portrayal of Shylock. But what's interesting about Shakespeare from my point of view, that is from someone who's thinking about and interested in how a society uses Judaism to think about its world, even a society in which there are no Jews alive. In Shakespeare's England, there had not been living Jews, identified Jews, for hundreds of years, and there wouldn't be for a good deal longer. Uh, and yet, when Shakespeare is trying to think through some of the most challenging changes in his own time, he does so through figures of Judaism, namely Shylock. Now, what are some of those changes? There are things like the lending of money at interest suddenly became legal in Shakespeare's day. Shakespeare's father had gone to jail for lending money at interest, and, and lending money at interest had always been thought of as Judaizing, as something Jews did but not Christians. All of a sudden, it's legal. Well, what makes the difference between a Christian who lends money at interest and a Jew? That's one of the issues that the Merchant of Venice is constantly thinking through, uh, and that's why it constantly repeats the line, you know, what is the difference between merchant and Jew? Merchant is another example. Uh, being a merchant in traditional medieval Catholicism was a stigmatized profession. The merchant cannot be a Christian, says Gratian's Decretum, which is one of the canon law codes of the Middle Ages. And now all of a sudden in England, in the 16th century, merchants are not only becoming incredibly rich, think of all the companies, the East India Company, et cetera, that become so important, but also incredibly powerful in the Republic, and they're claiming an ever more important role in governing the Republic. Well, what differentiates the merchant from the moneylender, buy low, sell high kind of um, uh, materialist that had previously been criticized as a Jew? Actually, theater is something new that Shakespeare has to think about. The first theater ticket sold for cash was sold in Shakespeare's own lifetime. He's part of a brand new profession in which uh, people are basically selling falsity for money, right? These are not morality plays. They're not about, they're all fun and falsity. And you can be sure that Christian moralists, both Protestant and Catholic, characterize the theater as Jewish. So how does Shakespeare think about the function of the theater and defend its function? Well, these are all things that he chose to do in The Merchant of Venice through a figure of Judaism, despite the fact, to repeat myself, that there were no Jews in Shakespeare's England, but they were still very good to think through all these issues. Hypocrisy had been, since the New Testament, identified with Judaism. Theater is a hypocritical art. It looks like one thing, but is another. Money lending with Judaism, materialism with Judaism, legalism, the whole idea, a pound of flesh, the contract that Shylock keeps on invoking, this idea that when do you enforce law and when do you not enforce law? What are the limits of enforcing law? Shakespeare chose to explore all these things by contrasting a Christian figure with a Jewish figure in this play. That's a wonderful example to my mind of how a a great artist, but I would say an entire culture, thinks with Judaism and imagines its responsibility to some degree to overcome Judaism, right? Which is what the, the play ends up doing. Shylock is defeated, um, even in an area in which there are no real Jews. So would I say that Shakespeare is anti-Semitic? I don't think that's a relevant question. Would I say that he's an expert in thinking through the possibilities for Judaism, and particularly for anti-Judaism, as a way of defining changes in his society and defining what uh, the good or the Christian role in that society should be? Absolutely, he was one of the great masters in deploying anti-Judaism to that degree. So great that the figures he created had a life long, long after uh, uh, and affected real Jews. So, for example, Shylock, became in many people's minds an image of a real Jew. And when, for example, the British Parliament was discussing in the 18th century what 
rights Jews should have, should they be citizens, etc. Exhibit A in the argument of those who said no was, look at Shylock, look at how he treated a fellow citizen. You can't grant a person like that those kinds of rights.